Okay, so I know I don't do many of these. I will do more of these um, in due course before your exam. Um, but here's a, a problem. Number 44 in chapter 10 in the, is it called the questions and problems? Questions and problems. A drone flying at an altitude of 200 meters drops a shell hoping to hit a target at a horizontal distance of half a kilometer from its current location. Okay, can you imagine what's happening here? So you've got the drone here, there's the drone, and there's a target here, let's call it X, and it wants to, it has a shell, and it wants to drop it so that it hits this guy. And uh, we know that that distance is half a kilometer, which is 500 meters. And it's, dry, it's flying at an altitude of 200 meters. 200. Okay, first of all, my question to you is, if it's flying, say now it's flying in a horizontal way, horizontal direction, and you drop this shell, it drops this, this thing, and it wants to hit this target, what is the shape going to be? Is it going to be like, like, is it going to go straight down? Is it going to go like this? Is it going to go like that? Or is it going to go like that? We know that if this guy is moving, if the drone is flying in the horizontal direction and it drops something, we know that the shape is like this, right? It's a projectile motion. Okay? So that's the idea. So it's, it starts off there like that. Okay. So this initial motion is horizontal and then it follows that path. Okay. Now, how long does it take the shell to reach the target? So remember, when we're dealing with projectile motion, we want to break it, we want to analyze the motion in, in its x direction and y direction. So how are we going to solve this problem? Well, why don't we just go and look in the, at the x uh, direction equations and see if that might help us. If not, then we look at the y direction equations. So where are they? Here they are. Remember the x direction, ax is zero. There's no acceleration because we neglect wind resistance to simplify the problem. There's no wind resistance. So let's look. Um, does this equation help us solve the problem? Remember, what are we trying to do? Question A is how long? So we're looking, for, we're looking for time. How long does it take for the particle, this, the shell, to hit the target? <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to try to find any equations that has time in it. Right? So this guy is helpful. It, it tells me that my velocity is constant, but it doesn't really tell me anything about solving this problem. What about this equation? My final position is equal to my initial position plus my initial velocity times time. Will that help me? Well, do I have my final and initial positions? My, yes, I actually do. That is my delta x. My delta x is 500 meters. If you just rearrange this, x final minus x initial is equal to my initial velocity in the x direction times time. So I'm looking for that, but do I have this guy? I don't have my initial velocity. So I can't use this equation. Okay? So let's move to the y direction. Will this guy help me? Do I have any initial, veloci initial velocity or final velocity information to calculate time? No, I can't use this one. What about this one? Do I have my final and initial positions? Yes. My, my initial position is 200 if we choose up as positive. Okay. There's y is up as positive and x to the right is positive. Yes. Do I have my initial velocity in the y? I actually do. We know that if you, if you drop something and you're analyzing it in the vertical direction, the vertical initial velocity is zero, right? If you just drop something straight down, 
the initial vert. So I've got that, yes. I've got these two. I know what G is, so I can use this to find time. Okay, so, so let's rewrite that. So Y final is Y initial plus VY initial times time minus half GT squared. Now my Y final, what is my Y final? It'll be zero, right? Because my, my final Y position will be zero. Okay? My initial Y position is plus 200. My initial velocity is zero, so this becomes zero times time. And then I'm going to have minus a half times 9.81 T squared. So if you solve for T there, you should get 6 point roughly 3839. Let's just make it 38 seconds. So there's your answer. That is how long it takes for this projectile to hit the target. So that's A. What about B? What, at what speed was the shell flying? So for me, this is a bit ambiguous. Does it mean, does it mean over here or when it hits the target? How about we, we consider both s situations? Okay. At what speed? Now remember, guys, speed is the magnitude of the velocity. And what is the magnitude of the velocity? It is simply Vx squared, the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. That is the magnitude of the velocity. So if we're over here, um, remember at any point, at any point along this line, the velocity is tangent and it's got two components, Vx, Vy. At this point, at this point, as soon as it lets go, we know that Vy is zero and the Vx is the same velocity as the drone was flying at horizontally. So at this initial position, at let's call it initial position, V is V v x v v is v x that's the answer because there's no v y v y is zero so your initial posi velocity would simply be the velocity that the drone was flying at but we don't actually have any of that information um yet okay but what about let's try to calculate what the final velocity or the final speed was okay over here so we've got V and then we, we need to calculate VX and VY. Okay, so how am I going to calculate VX and VY? Let's try to calculate VX. Let's see, where, how can we calculate VX? Maybe we can use this equation. We've got our range, our delta X, which is my 500. And I've got my time now. We calculated time to be 6.38. So I can calculate my Vx. So we've got 500 is Vx initial times 6.38. So Vx initial was calculated as 78.3 meters per second. So if you're considering what your speed was over here, your speed over here was simply 78 3 meters per second because your your speed was vx squared plus vy squared square root and so you're going to put in 78.3 squared plus zero the square root and you're going to get this so at the initial position your speed the magnitude was simply that now what about the initial velocity okay the initial velocity i hope you see this would be then 78.3 I plus zero J meters per second. That is if you write it out in uh, rectangular coordinates. So it only initially it only has a horizontal component. So this is the speed and that is if you write it out in vector form. Now what about calculating the velocity and the speed over here? Okay. 
Um, so that means we've got Vx, because Vx is constant right throughout. So we've got Vx. Let's try to find Vy now. How are we going to do that? Well, we could simply use this guy. We've got the initial velocity, which is 0. We've got the time. And now we can find the final velocity at impact. Okay, so we've got Vy final is equal to 0 minus 9.81 uh, times 6.38. And that equals minus 62.6 meters per second. So right over here, if I want to rewrite, you've got this velocity vector there. You've got this 78.3 uh, in the x. And you've got, you've got minus 62.6 over there. Those are your two components. So my final velocity in vector form will be 78.3i minus 62.6j meters per second and my speed which is the magnitude would be 78.3 squared plus minus 62.6 squared square root which gives me 100.24 meters per second so this is the speed and that is the velocity at impact. And then this is the speed, and that's the velocity initial. And this is answering B and C. At what speed was the shell flying? What is the velocity of the shell at impact? Okay? All right. Cheers.